if you are looking forward to studying abroad and you don't have money you don't have the cash you don't even know how you're going to do it but you wish to further your education in another country let's say usa uk canada australia you know different part of the world you just feel like i want to further my education i want to have you know more knowledge from other countries i want to gain you know um I want to gain professional knowledge i want to understand uh, you know the practical knowledge and all that but you don't want to do it in your country you want to relocate to another country but you don't have the money you don't have the funds you don't even know how you're going to do it then this video is for you let's be in an hurry to leave yet because this is going to be educational and, and informational for you and i'm very sure that it's going to help you especially if you're looking to relocate abroad through the study route um, you must have been hearing about assistantship scholarship fully funded but do you know that these three they actually differs so this is where i'm going to be starting because based on the topic that i want to discuss today that is getting assistantship slash scholarship to study abroad be it masters be it phd whatever degree that you're looking forward to like this is how you can get assistantship or scholarship or fully funded but then you need to know the differences so that you can know the one that you actually want and go for it and start planning towards it all right so what is assistantship assistantship is a type of financial support where students work as either a teaching assistant or research assistant while they are studying that means that you're working while studying and the kind of work that you do is related to your field of study so this is how it works it's like helping professors to teach undergraduate courses dot research grade assessments provide administrative support and in return you get paid for it in return you receive a stipend or salary and sometimes you get additional benefits like tuition waivers or health insurance coverage right and that is assistantship for you so i kind of like assistantship because it provides valuable experience for you while you study right and you also have work experience while you're studying so i kind of like assistantship but assistantship can either be fully funded or partially funded right so sometimes you get a total package sometimes you just get a partial package you have to bring in some money also and pay and some and some assistantship you don't even need to pay anything the salary the stipends and everything just covers it for you and now let's move on to scholarship so what is scholarship scholarship on the other hand is a kind of a form of financial aid that is awarded to students based on their academic performance when you see people that have first class second class upper and all that most most of them get scholarship based on their academic performance so if you have a good grade then you might get a scholarship to study abroad it's like being rewarded for your hard work or for meeting basic requirement and sometimes scholarship does not have to do with your grade alone sometimes it can be about your community you know development performance or you know your leadership experience and all that so scholarship is not just based on grades alone sometimes it's about your collective you know um, experience and meeting specific requirements scholarship can be offered by the university it can be offered by government bodies can be offered by foundations corporations or other institutions you know scholarship is kind of competitive sometimes because of the additional benefits like living allowance and your traveling expenses it covers everything so that is why it is kind of competitive so let's go to fully funded so what is fully funding when you hear that people get fully funded scholarship what does it mean fully funded means that all expenses that is related to your education is fully covered right it's like having all your educational cost covered without having to pay a dime and that's why it is called fully funded it is fully funded covered right so you don't have to stress yourself because you are covered fully funded opportunities sometimes they are often provided through scholarships you know, assistantships fellowships you know like i said when i was talking about assistantship i said sometimes it is fully it, sometimes it can be fully sometimes it can be partial so when we are talking about fully funded that means this one you don't have to pay anything from your traveling to your educational costs and everything to the stipends you don't have to pay because it's fully funded the fully funded programs are you know kind of attractive to international students you know it helps you to cover everything with fully funded is also competitive you know because all everything is going to be covered so for you so for you to get that kind of opportunity you should know that you have a lot of work to do right <laughs> so fully funded is is very good and this allows you to focus on your study without having to bother about you know what are you going to how you are going to work you know everything like that it allows you to focus 100 percent 
on your studies and now let's look at the type of assistant that we have you know the most popular that people know is um, TA and heart aid and that is teaching assistant and the research assistant right but we have other ones so I'm going to be taking it one by one the first one is the teaching assistant and this is, this is when a graduate student you know works a department in teaching assistant for an undergraduate you know course our responsibilities may include leading discussion sessions grading assignments providing feedback to students assisting the professors with course preparation so the second one is the research assistant that's where you work in a lab under a faculty member like you work in a lab you assist the professor in working in the lab with research and all that Some of the work that a research assistant do includes conducting experiments collecting data analyzing results assisting with research publications and presentations now another kind of assistantship is administrative assistant it's for those that are studying a business related course you might work in the administrative department of the school right so some of the things you'll be doing include you know managing schedules organi organizing events or conferences responding to inquiries and providing general administrative support just the work of an administrative assistant so that's another kind of assistantship we also have graduate assistantship in athletics this is those people that are into sports so it's just like assisting them in doing some of the works in different departments in different field it depends irrespective of the field that you are so it goes on and on like that right so let's move on to the kind of scholarships that we have first one is the merits-based academic scholarship this one is based on your grades it's based on your academic achievement people that have high grades you know there are some courses there are different you know scholarships for different field of you know different courses different faculty different faculty. we have for engineering nursing medicine different fields right but this kind of scholarship is based on you know the outstanding results people that have good grades or let's say best graduating students outstanding this and that so it's basically based on your academic achievement so this is just the merit-based academic scholarship for you it's based on your grade per se scholarship covers a significant portion of your tuition fee so you may not have to pay everything but it's going to cover like you know a, a significant amount right it may not be hard but it's going to cover a significant amount and sometimes it could be the entire tuition fee for that particular program maybe you're going for master's degree and it's two years and all that it's going to cover everything so a kind of scholarship that you might know already is the stem scholarship and stem means science technology engineering or mathematics field so that's the stem scholarship is for people in this particular for science under technology you know engineering and mathematics so it's it's well explainable so this kind of scholarship for people in this particular field for you to get this kind of scholarship you must demonstrate strong academic performance in stem subject to provide your letters of recommendation essays and all that right and another kind of scholarship that you should know we also have the international student scholarship this is for international students it is um you know a kind of scholarship that is offered by universities for international students who wish to study abroad so these scholarships are made available but for you to get all the scholarship you still have to demonstrate you know strong academic performance and sometimes you have to demonstrate your strong leadership position so you know sometimes in 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 the u.s right or at other schools also you really don't need more about your grades or how you your your field is being tailored towards a particular no is how you are able to communicate that what you did is actually in relation with this and that is why you must be very good in you know um application writing or your statement of purpose your state personal statement must be very strong for you to get all these things right it's not just about having everything you did much you did this no sometimes if you are able to relate if you are able to you know if you are able to tell them in your statement of purpose that you did english but this is how it's related to mathematics you know something like that trust me you are going to get the scholarship so sometimes it is not just about um, your field or your grade or anything and that is why sometimes you hear sec um, you hear people with third class um second class lower they will tell you that they got scholarship so sometimes it's not just about the grade at least i know of some people that add two to third class and they got scholarships and 
some of these people they you know they emphasize more on their leadership experience their voluntary experience community development so sometimes beyond outside your grades or anything outside your academics your grade then you might need to still you know develop other area your volunteering um, experience and others so that's that about the scholarship there are different ones you can also check it out and let's talk about the fully funded you know uh, examples the first one um, that is popularly known by people is the Shebeni scholarship Sh Shebeni scholarship is fully funded and that's by the UK government right so it's the UK government that um, that sponsors students who are able to get these Shebeni scholarships and another kind of scholarship is the Erasmus you know the Erasmus scholarship where you travel to different countries just to complete your degree but it has to be I think around Europe, but you do different part of Europe. And we have the Swedish Institute Scholarship, we have the Australia Award Scholarships, different kind of scholarship sponsored by government bodies, and it is fully funded. We have the Fulbright Scholarship, you know, different kind of scholarships. But what people don't know is if when you make research, you are going to you are going to find out that there are different scholarships. In fact, scholarships that you yourself you can grab, right? It doesn't have to do it doesn't have to be about your grade alone because some people feel like i have a i have a low grade i don't have what it takes and they just zero their mind from getting scholarship or studying abroad but the good news is you can actually get scholarship even with your low grade you just have to be able to back it up with good application writing um that's your personal statement and you know have good recommendation you know it's just more about communicate, communicating what you, uh, your, 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 your experience and your skills, your talents, what you have done. It is, it is more about communication, most especially um, when it comes to applying for scholarships, right? And that is why you'll be asked to write essays and they want to see, they want to see, you know, how you can communicate what you say you are good at. Or want, they want to see how you can communicate your leadership experience. And that is why when writing Shebeni, it is, it is into four parts, I, I think four parts you have to write like four essays right so these people if they just want to see how creative you are how innovative you are and all that so that is why these are the essays that mostly get you into the room and you must be able to you know um emphasize more on other things if you don't have the grades because they are, it is highly competitive a lot of people are applying for it so you can't just submit any our essays you have to sit down think and you know be able to capture their attention and you know and i wish you the best anyway so um these are the different examples under the fully funded assistantship and scholarships now do you get assistantship or scholarship to study abroad right so the number one thing that people don't like to do which is very important is research right and by now i feel you should have your international passport and your transcript even if it's not the official one you should have a copy with you by now you should have all your academic records ready right you should have it by now then you research a lot of people don't like to research and you have to make that research because one thing it is one thing to know that a, a university offers scholarship it's another thing to be sure that the course you want to apply for has scholarships available because if you apply you are given the admission and you don't have funds then you might lose the admission number one make your research check out the schools you know first of all the schools that um, let's say for example you don't have gre you don't have ilts you don't have toefls you don't have all those you know uh, proficiency first of all you have to research schools that own that have waived gre that have waived um, ilts and all this english proficiency you know all this um tests standardized tests you have to look for universities that have waived all these things and the next thing is to go over to university that offer the kind of course that you want because not all university offers the course that you have in mind so you have to research and check out different universities that have the course that have the course that you want to study now the next thing you do is go over to that course go to their website go to that course and check out the requirements you have to check the requirements to be sure that okay 
um this one these are the you have all the requirements that they want when you have all the requirements that they want then that's a good news for you and after knowing that okay yes i have this requirement then you have to check out the professors in the department the lecturers and the, the professors in that particular department you have to send them a mail people call it code mail right you send a mail you know to be sure that there is assistantship or scholarship available for you and for those that want to go for phd you have to measure you have to know about code mailing very well you have to be able to code mail different professors just to inquire that you want to apply for phd or masters in the school in the department uh in the department of so 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 faculty of so so you know i'm going to show you a template okay this is a template that you can follow you can follow this template and for those on the tele or my telegram for those in the telegram community i'm going to be dropping different templates that you can use to apply for this masters and phd and if you are not yet in the community page just check the link on my bio for the telegram channel and you can just join right so i'm going to be dropping the template so um you code mail you ask them to be sure that there is assistantship or scholarships available that you would like to apply um, anyhow you write respectfully write politely so that you can get the information that you want and after that the response will determine your next line of action if you are told that there is assistantship then fine you go ahead apply and for some schools you know they might they can even waive application fee for you see there that there is application waiver so sometimes you can apply for application waiver and if there is no application waiver you just have to pay for the application right so um then you go ahead you apply and you know you just follow up with the or the professor that you'll be chatting with and they tell you what to do or they refer you to the refer you to the right um platform the right link or the right person that is going to assist you right so after that you prepare your application materials because trust me if you want to apply you need to submit some of your application materials and the popular one that i know and this is dependent on the university so you can't say because i said is that is what they are going to ask in you know, our universities no it differs different requirements different schools right so some of the application materials that i know that will be requested from you number one is your cv or resume so if you are a phd student you know that you need an academic cv and if you're a master student you need a good cv also and don't just submit any house cv because that doesn't mean that you know you they told you that there is assistantship and you are not the only one applying so your materials application materials and everything must be must be what it right you don't just submit any our application materials now that they you know that there is assistantship this is like uh 40 percent of the work done right so the application materials too they are very very important your cv or resume very very important you have to highlight your educational background research experience if you have publications and this is just for phd students work experience or any relevant experience you have to add it to your cv so sometimes your work cv is different from your academic cv so you don't just submit any else cv your application materials must be worth it like i said and another thing is the statement of purpose of course you are going to submit your statement of purpose and this is <laughs> this part is where you need to tell your story and you have to be able to convince them that yes you are the right person you know to get this assistantship to get this admission because apart from the admission admission is one thing assistantship is another thing once you are told that there is assistantship then you need to vie for the admission and this is where you need to submit your application materials so your statement of purpose is very very important you have to write a compelling essay that highlights your academic and career goals why you want to pursue you know your study abroad and how the assistantship or the scholarship will help you to achieve them so you have to put all these things into it you don't just write any sop right you have to let them know that you deserve it and another material that i feel is very very important in the application process is letters of recommendation for your letters of recommendation you might need to request letter of recommendation from your professor in school your supervisor your employers or other individuals that can speak on your academic abilities 
search potential and your personal qualities these are the people that are well acquainted with you and that is why it is good to build a relationship with your professors in school your supervisor you should have a relationship with them so that they can write about you and when you're writing letter of recommendation don't go and make it generic don't just make it generic let them write something that they feel in me that they really know about you just let them write something and that's why you have to build relationship because you can't just reach out to anybody to just write for you or professors that you have not spoken with for over 10 years so this should give you an idea that this is new year so like um one of our speakers said for the phd scholarship he said this is where you need to start reaching out to them happy new year start in time you have to start making that baby step so that when you need something from them they'll easily give it to you so reach out to them wish them happy new year buy them wine send them recharge card you know form of kindness will go a long way in getting you good letter of recommendations you don't want to miss that reach out to your boss you know people that can recommend people that know about your personal you know you don't just reach out to people just because you need a favor from them you should start you know you should start setting the pace right now all right so an, another application material that you will need is your academic transcripts academic transcript from your previous educational institution maybe if you are going for phd you need your transcript for masters and if you're going for masters you need the one for your um, bachelor's degree so you need to get it from your school and for some persons they already have it for some you have to go to your school to get it so you need your academic transcript whichever way you want to do it you need a copy and that is why i said before you start you need your international passport you need your transcript and now another material that might be requested for like i said is the standardized test for to test your english proficiency or you know just like gre and all that and that is why i said in the first place make sure that these schools if you don't have it make sure that you're applying to schools that have already waived it and one of the schools that i've that, that i have waived gre is um florida state university that's in usa and there are other schools also i'm going to be sharing it on the telegram community right so um that's one of the application materials but i've told you to look for the schools that that won't um make you go through the stress again and the money you know, because you have to pay for this you know but if you have the money wow feel free to just go for it if you don't have it i'm just suggesting and the last one that is not really necessary for everyone but this this is for phd students you might need to submit a research proposal but this is not this is optional for some schools and this is compulsory for some schools so you might need to submit a research proposal especially if you are applying for a research based program you are going to submit a research proposal and this research proposal must be well detailed it must highlight your intended research topic the methodology and um and objectives once you have submitted your applications and you know everything then you have to follow up after some weeks you have to just follow up and don't just leave it like that it is very important you follow up and you have to make sure that you monitor your email because you might be asked to maybe fill a form or anything make sure you are checking your email from time to time right just to be sure that you are not missing out on you are not missing out on anything and finally to prepare for interviews that is if applicable not all schools will request for interviews but just in case just in case especially if you are getting scholarship or assistantship <laughs> just prepare for interviews because it's possible they want to interview you they want to have a conversation with you so you have to prepare for interviews by researching common interview questions and that is your responses showcasing your qualifications and you know and motivations so make sure that you're acquainted with what is on your sop your statement of purpose your essay because it's not part of the questions they will ask you in the interview so don't just write an sop make sure that you know what you go to your sop and you know you fully understand your why because you'll be asked some questions that are related to that and um i think lastly last selected you receive an acceptance letter or email that you know um that outline the terms and conditions attached to your assistantship or scholarships and for some it might be that your grade must not be less than this you must maintain a particular grade you just have to read the terms and conditions and make sure that you abide by them so that you don't miss your 
assistantship and come back home <laughs> it's very very important so you have to know what you're doing even after getting the scholarship doesn't end there you have to make sure that you take your academic serious and you know you have to make them proud that you're actually worth it in the first place so don't make them regret giving you assistantship or scholarship there is more work to do after that right and i hope that this video is um detailed enough on how to get assistantship or scholarship to further your education abroad please let me know in the comment section if you have any question and do not hesitate to reach out for any information or inquiries and don't forget to share this video with your friends your colleagues your audience and please and please don't for don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel it takes a whole lot of work to make this video to upload it and just for you guys please in return i'd love you to subscribe to my channel and share with your friends tell your friends about my channel because i share valuable and legit information about job about job seeking immigration media and marketplace all right see you in my next youtube video i love you and i want the best for you bye